This is the example on slide 37 of our chapter 15 PowerPoint. And this is another redox balancing problem. Um, this time it's specifically an acidic solution and we're gonna have to deal with balancing some hydrogens and oxygens. So this one is a little bit more complex than our previous example. So first things first, when we're balancing these, we need to determine the oxidation numbers of everything to figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. In the previous problem, that was a little bit more obvious. This one's a little bit trickier. So let's go ahead and get started. For iodine minus, it tells you the charge of the ion, so it's a minus one. For this is the dichromate ion, it's polyatomic ion. Oxygen is minus two. Now this one's a little tricky because, and I'll go ahead and write it, we have seven oxygens, each contributing minus two. So that's seven times minus two. We're trying to add up our oxidation numbers to two minus, and we also have two chromiums. So whatever number we get here, we're gonna have to divide by two so that it's only accounting for the oxidation number of one chromium. So seven times negative two is negative 14, trying to add up to two minus. Therefore, our chromium oxidation numbers together have to be plus 12. Since we have two of them, plus 12 is for the total charge. So we're gonna divide that number by two to get an oxidation number of plus six for each chromium. Hopefully that makes sense. That one's a very tricky one to determine. For iodine two solid, it's by itself, it's an element, oxidation state of zero. And for chromium three plus, it tells us the oxidation state is plus three. So therefore, I'm gonna erase this part since we figured that out. Let's figure out what's being reduced. So chromium is going from plus six to plus three. It's getting more negative. Therefore, that's my reduction. For iodine, we're going from negative one to zero. It's getting more positive, therefore, that's my, not reduction, oxidation. So now we're gonna split them up into their half reactions. And we had to figure out what was oxidized or reduced to figure out which components go together, although it might be kind of obvious from the problem. So iodine, minus is converted to I2 and chromium 2072 minus is converted to Cr3 plus. So now the second step is to balance the elements other than hydrogen and oxygen and in this one we actually do have to balance. So in our oxidation and reduction. We actually have to do it for both. So if you see in our oxidation, we have one iodine on the reactant side and two on the product side. So we need these numbers of elements to be balanced on either side. So I'm going to put a two in front of my iodine so that I have two iodines on both sides. For my reduction, I have two chromiums on the reactant side but only one on the product side. So I'm gonna to have to put a two in front of my chromium three plus. So now step two also incorporates the fact that, okay, so our elements that are being oxidized or reduced are balanced, um, but we also have to balance the, in the second one, the oxygens. So, um, for the first one, we have two iodines on the reactant, two on the product. That's balanced. We're good. For the second, we have oxygens that we need to balance. 
So in a redox reaction, you balance oxygen with H2O. That means to the opposite side you would add waters to balance the oxygen. And to balance hydrogen, you add H+. So in this reduction reaction, we have seven oxygens in the um, reactant side. So I'm going to add seven waters to the product side. And the reason I'm adding seven waters is because seven times one oxygen for each water gives me seven oxygens, which allows the oxygen on this reactant side to be balanced. Now we've created another additional problem in the fact that we now have hydrogens on the product side, but not on the reactant side. So to balance those, we're going to add H+. Plus. So 7 times 2 hydrogens in each water is 14. So in order to balance all of those, I'm going to have 14 H plus on my reactant side. So now all of my elements are balanced on either side. In the next step, step three, this is where we have to balance the number of electrons that are being transferred. So in the oxidation, remember, electrons are written as a product. So if we go back to our original slide, we see that iodine is going from negative 1 to 0. That means we're transferring one electron. But since we have two iodines, that means that we're transferring a total of two because we're basically performing this reaction twice. So on our product side, we're going to say plus two electrons, one from each transfer. For the reduction, if we go back to our original slide, chromium's going from plus six to plus three. So that's a total of three electrons transferred but since we have two chromiums, this reaction is happening twice, so um, three times two would be a total of six electrons transferred. So then the next step, after we figured out how many electrons are transferred in each half reaction, is to make sure that the number of electrons transferred between the two half reactions are equal. So in our oxidation we have two electrons and on our reduction we have six. So that means my oxidation I'm going to need to multiply by three and that's going to get me up to a total transfer of six electrons. So if I rewrite that down here it's going to be six I minus gives me three I2 plus 6 electrons. So we've multiplied everything out. My electrons transferred are equal to one another. Now the last thing I need to do is add these two half reactions together. So only thing that's going to cancel are my electrons. We have 6 electrons in the reduction um, reactant side and six electrons in the oxidation product side. So those are going to cancel. And then I can rewrite everything. So 14 H plus, and these are aqueous, make sure we include our fades, plus six I minus, which is also aqueous, plus Cr2O7 2 minus, that is aqueous, gives me 3I2, that is a solid, plus, oops, marking off the page, plus 2 Cr3 plus, also aqueous, plus 7H2O, which is a liquid. 
And that is your final answer. And you can go through and double check to make sure the charges are balanced. Um, on the reactant side, you should have a six plus charge and on the product side, you should have a six plus charge and you can go through and double check that as well as making sure all the elements are equal to one another, which they are. So that's how you do balancing with a little bit more comp complex example in an acidic solution.